I'm Susan Stripling. I am a wedding photographer. I'm also a blogger. I also shoot portraits. I know a lot of people don't want to shoot weddings because it can be scary, because there are things that can go wrong. However, you know, when we're talking about common mistakes or pitfalls of shooting weddings, I think that there are really two kinds. There are the avoidable ones and there are the unavoidable ones. There are the ones that, hey, listen, if I had done this, said this, prepped this, planned that, it wouldn't have happened. And then there's the, this came out of left field, nobody saw this coming, what in the world do we do about this kind of problems where you have to think on your feet and think fast. So the first most common pitfall is not managing your client's expectations before the actual wedding. And I know that that's big and I know that that's generic, but it can encompass a lot of things. Managing the time of the day for me is number one, first and foremost, the most important expectation that you can manage and doing that before the wedding will mean that nothing unexpected happens on the wedding day that you haven't already talked about with your clients. So before the wedding, about six weeks before, I send them a questionnaire. And one of the things on the questionnaire is their family formal list. And I find out how much time we have for it and what groupings they expect me to accomplish in that time. And nine times out of 10, the result of that is I have to pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, listen, let's talk about this. I would rather do that before the wedding and cut the list down or expand the time than show up on the wedding and have that list handed to me and say, there's no way we can do this. People might be late or they might forget something and need to add it on there, but at least you've done everything that you could beforehand to get that list down to something that you know you can do in the time that you have. So another pitfall to definitely avoid is finding out who's in charge, right? Do they have a coordinator? If they have a coordinator, is it day of or is it full service? Do they not have a coordinator, but they have a coordinator at the church? And then a separate person at the venue? Do they have nobody in charge whatsoever and they've got a friend doing it? Knowing who your go-to person is, is going to solve a lot of problems for you. Because the last thing that you want to do on the wedding day is have to go to the bride or the groom to have something clarified. You need a point of contact that is someone other than them. So for that reason, on my questionnaire that I send my client six weeks before the wedding, the first thing is what's the bride's name and contact info, what's the groom's name and contact info, and who is my point of contact on the wedding day? Coordinator, venue staff, bridesmaid, it can't be me. Because if I'm coordinating your day, I'm not shooting your day. So sometimes you will show up, you'll have this huge curveball thrown at you where they've changed around the whole schedule of the day. And the best way to get through that is to either smile and nod if it's something that's workable, or to say, hey, listen, before we get started, let's, we need to talk about this really quick because there are some things in this change that aren't going to work the way we thought they were. And I have actually had to say to clients, listen, if we're going to do this new timeline, which we can totally do because it's your day, not mine, you need to know that these three hours of portraits we're going to do is now 10 minutes. And I need you to tell me that you're okay with that. Because after the wedding, if she comes back and says, we only got 10 minutes of portraits, I have to be able to refer back and say, hey, listen, you told me you were okay with that. And you have to really spell it out. If you do A, then B will happen. Are you okay with that? And you need to get a yes. Otherwise, you know, you're opening yourself up to, hey, this isn't what we thought we were going to get afterwards. And you want your clients to be happy. So the biggest pitfall that befalls me nine times out of 10 on a wedding day is things running late. And listen, we've managed expectations, we've talked about the timeline, we've written it all out. I've generously padded the time, they've generously padded the time. But what happens when you show up in hair and makeup or running two hours late? Or if it takes her 45 extra minutes to get ready, or if the ceremony starts 20 minutes late but they're not gonna extend cocktail hour. All of these things are going to affect your photographic coverage. And in years past, it used to really frustrate me because I wanted my timeline and I wanted to be able to do things the way I wanted to do them. But now I realize that people running late is completely beyond my control. I can do the best I can to ensure that we have enough time for everything, but if they're late, they're just late. I'm not gonna say hurry up, I'm not gonna say, you know, let's go, let's get moving, but I'm going to say, hey, listen, you wanted to do Central Park and Battery Park, now we're out of time, you have to pick one. And I'm not gonna say, you know, hey, everything's cool, it's gonna be fine, I'm gonna say, listen, we are running really late but it's all in how you talk to the client about it because they're not going to remember anything other than how you made them feel in that moment. They're not gonna remember your precise words, but they're going to remember my photographer stressed me out or my photographer was calm. And you want to be the my photographer was calm. So inevitably something bad is going to happen to your gear while you're at work. 
Um, a couple years ago, I dropped a D4S with a 70 to 200 on it, and it snapped the 70 to 200 mount and screwed up the D4S mount, and they were both out of commission. You know, if that had happened to me a year in, I would have cried at the wedding. But when it happened this time, I said, well, this one's out. Guys, give me five minutes. I'm going to set up my backup camera and we'll be good to go. And they were like, oh my goodness, are you okay? And I was like, it's cool. Just take a second. We're going to be fine. And in my head, I had died six times by then. These things are going to happen. You need to have enough backup that if you have a camera down, a lens down, you leave something behind that you can just pull out your next one and keep on going. And then just keep cool. You know, I'm assuming that all of you, by the time you're at this point, will have insurance. That's what it's there for. If things happen, they happen. But it's keeping cool in that situation, and I don't try to hide problems like that from my clients. So stay cool, have your panic attack when you go home, sweep up your lenses, and just keep on going. Another pitfall that I see sort of befalling photographers everywhere, whether you're five minutes into the business or 15 years into the business, is not having a system before the wedding day. Knowing where everything in your bag goes, knowing how you're charging your batteries, knowing where you store your batteries. For example, we carry two camera bags to every single wedding and we know what goes in every single slot. So if I open up my camera bags and I look down in there and there's a slot that's empty, I know what's missing. We have a bag with two compartments for batteries, charged on one side, need to be charged on the other side. I know exactly what I need to do with them, but you can get sloppy. You know, you can think I've been shooting all these weddings and I, nothing has been changing, I'm just gonna grab the bags and go, but that was the one week you took a camera body and a 70 to 200 out to go to an engagement session and you never put it back. You always need to look. Another thing that could possibly happen to you on the wedding is finding yourself in an awkward personal or professional situation that you don't know how to handle. Some of this is figuring out how you plan on conducting yourself on the wedding day. And my assistant and I are very clear. What do we wear? How do we behave? How do we talk to clients? You don't swear in front of clients. You don't drink in front of clients. If you're a smoker, you don't smoke in front of clients. You know, how do we want to be perceived professionally? And then when you get yourself into a situation where something very awkward might be happening, how are you going to handle it? And you can't game all of that out. Beforehand, we can have our generic ways we're going to handle things, but Figuring out how you're going to handle yourself professionally and then staying calm when something like that happens is major. Another pitfall to avoid is not having the skills to handle certain situations. Being able to handle every situation that's thrown at you photographically, not just how you behave and keeping your game face on and staying cool, but let's say you went to a reception and you thought there was going to be a lot of ambient light and there's not. It's completely pitch black. What do you do? What happens if the ceremony that was supposed to be at sunset is running 45 minutes late and now it's in complete dark? What do you do? You know, developing your skills is so important because you need to be able to roll with it without even thinking about it. I'm Susan Stripling. If you want to find more of my work at susanstripling.com. I also blog educationally for photographers on thedynamicrange.com.